Today I'm going to be reviewing ColorFab's new N-Gen filament. So ColorFab sent me a couple rolls of their new N-Gen filament and it came in a big brown box and inside were these smaller uh, cardboard boxes and they're packaged really nicely. Um, on the back it has all the information of what it is, how to print it, what your settings should be. Um, inside uh, they came on a clear roll and it was a uh, shrink wrapped in plastic again so it's kind of a double layer of packaging um, I really like the clear roll I like how you can see how much filament's still on there which is really nice um, and looking at it uh, you can tell it's not like a PLA I think they they say it's kind of like their next level of PLA um, but you can tell it's super glossy super shiny this is when you want to print a really nice finished part um, something you want to either give to a friend or sell or something like that. These rolls go from anywhere between 30 and 35 euro. Um, they have all different colors, all different sizes, um, 1.75 millimeters and 2.85. If you're worried about shipping time from over there, you shouldn't be. It got to my house here in Michigan in like two or three days. So let's take it upstairs. I'll show you the settings that I came up with. We'll print out a couple uh, test pieces and we can bring them back down and look at them and um, tell you how I think this should best be printed with and uh, let you know what I think of it. Well, here I am up at the computer and the first thing I wanted to show you was ColorFab's website. They have all sorts of different colors, sizes, and the one that I'm testing is their new engine filament. You can see it comes in, again, several different colors. I have the yellow and the white. There's lots of information on their site. It shows tips and tricks. It gives you temperature um, to print it at, temperature for the heated bed. Again, is written right on their roll, so you don't really have to come to their site. It's nice to have it right on the roll. Here are the, uh, the pieces I'm gonna be printing for testing. And the first one is a chess piece with these angled overhangs, but there is some more detail at the top. So this is kind of a general thing that has a lot of complicated little parts on it to get right. The next thing is a bottle opener, and I wanted to show what this is strength in the material. Um, whether it has to be rigid, it has to bend a little, you don't want it to snap, than that. And another one is this carabiner. This has to be strong yet bendable. You're gonna have to bend it, but it has to have some strength and not snap. And the final very detailed um, ins and outs and corners and overhangs are going to need support structure and overhangs. So if you open up Cura, and this is the old version like I said, and you bring in your part, the first thing is your temperature. Now they recommend 220 to 240, so a good starting point is obviously 230, and a bed temperature 80 to 50 degrees Celsius. From then on, you're gonna be changing things based on the part. So that's a good starting point for the filament. The, the rest of these you're gonna be changing for that part. For the retraction speed, I had 50 and five, and I'm actually gonna increase that to 60 and six because it is a little bit runnier and you want it to pull that filament back so you don't get those little globs. So I'll print these four prints out and I'll let you know what I think. Well, I just finished printing all eight test parts from ColorFab's new NGen filament, and here's what they look like. And real quickly, once again, I had a Z spacing of 0.3 millimeters, which is a lot. Um, I'm trying to push the filament and this printer to kind of, not its breaking point, but by pushing it, I can see where hopefully mistakes can happen. And this filament handled everything really well. The layers are super uh, blended in together. It has a very, very professional looking uh, finish. And it is one of those things you get what you pay for. Yeah, this might be a little bit more expensive than a cheap PLA, but this stuff handled every situation really well. Just printing with it, it came out buttery smooth. So if you want a, a clean, finished, professional part, um, this is definitely worth it for those really nice prints that you want to do. 
So looking first at the chess piece that I printed, the overhangs printed nicely, which some other filaments didn't. This thing had no problem printing that overhang. Maybe I had a too small of a fan, but this stuff hardened up right away and it looked great. This filament is a little bit more uh, runny than other types of filaments. And that's an advantage in how well it blends layers. But when my printer would stop, do it would do a loop around and stop and raise that print bed because it was raising such a long distance, a little bit of filament was coming out. But once I realized it, and I printed off several different uh, test parts to get the right retraction speed and the re right retraction distance. And once I had it dialed in for this filament, it printed great. So just know if, if you're gonna use this, the, the runniness is I think an advantage on how well it looks, but you have to account for it a little bit in your settings for retraction. As far as the little carabiners, again, they're not rigid like a PLA. They're a little bit more bendy. So they're a little more like a PETG in, in terms of ductability. Um, you could tell they're strong, not like a PLA where any second I'm afraid it's going to snap. This stuff, I can feel like you, you can tell it's just durable and it's going to uh, handle well. Um, as far as the bottle opener, again, this is completely rigid, but I'm not as uh, afraid of it snapping like a PLA. And again, these layers, super smooth together. You can hardly see them on either the yellow or the white. You, you can barely see it. This, I would say right off the print bed, these are finished parts. They're good to go. You don't have to do anything, no sanding. These layers are blended in so smoothly and that's with a 0.3 millimeter Z height. If, if you point, print it at 0.2 or 0.1, it would look amazing. So I'm happy with how that turned out and the strength as well. And as far as the uh, figure, the Yoda head, again, at point three, you don't expect much, but these look really great and the detail in the face looks great. I did print um, a support on these overhangs. I don't think it really needed it. As shown from the chest piece, it didn't need it on this overhang. It printed just fine. It hardened up with that fan and both of these came out excellent. This is one of the nicest filaments I've printed with. It was buttery smooth. All the parts look really great and professional and shiny just like the filament itself. Even with this cheap printer, the parts came out looking like they were printed on a much nicer printer. This will make up for all those mistakes that you have or the things you don't have dialed in. You might not have the right settings or the best fan or the right hot end or things like that. This filament is so forgiving, you know, you get what you pay for as far as this filament goes. It looks really good. So I'm really happy with uh, ColorFab's NGen filament. If you've uh, printed with it before, let me know what you think. And if you haven't, I recommend going to the website and checking it out, especially this NGen. It, it printed above and beyond what a PLA will do. It's, it's more for a finished part when you want it to look really good and really professional. I hope you liked the review and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Now the first thing I usually do is I have it usually set up for, I'll open up a profile and I'll bring in a PLA, which is like this. But the obviously you have to change the first thing is your temperature. Now they recommend 220 to 240. So a good starting point is obviously 230. And a bed temperature they recommend is 80 to 50 degrees Celsius. So I'll do it a little hotter than normal and I'll say 70. From then on, you're gonna be changing things based on the part. So that's a good starting point for the filament. The rest of these you're gonna be changing for that part. So if you want it very detailed, you can lower this number, 0.2 is fine. Shell thickness and bottom and top thickness, that's fine for this part. I don't need it to be that strong. 20%, I might make it 40 to make it a little stronger. It's not gonna really change the time that much. Um, print speed will be fine. You know, if I wanted to get really detailed, I can slow it down, and I will be slowing down certain parts of it. Um, support type, I won't need any for this. For things like the uh, Yoda head, um, I will need support. So for that, I'll be changing that to everywhere. Um, brim, I'll leave that alone. The rest of these, I'll leave. So I'll be th these temperatures uh, here shouldn't really change the print speed. None of this up here should change, but for each individual part. Um, like the little link figure, I'll, I, I definitely will need support. So I'll be changing those for each specific part, but overall, uh, certain things won't change. Uh, a big one is retraction. Now, um, I did already set up a profile 
for this NGEN filament. And for the retraction speed, I had 50 and 5, and I'm actually going to increase that to 60 and 6 because it is a little bit runnier and you want it to pull that filament back so you don't get those little globs. I also found it fine to printing at 150% for that initial line just to get more filament out there. It does well spreading out and it makes a nice smooth clean bottom layer on glass. Um, travel speed, I want it to move fast so you're not getting those little stringy lines. The first layer, you can print that at 30. It, I didn't have an issue at all with it adhering to the bed so you, you could print it at the full 40 but 30 is fine. Um, the sh outer shell speed can also be a little bit slower at 30. In infill can be faster um, and the inner shell that can be uh, left alone or at 40. Um, so these are the base settings that I'm going to start with to print. If I see some little um, little issues I'll change them but like I said I've already tweaked some of these things to try to get it a little better and I even used uh, the new Cura or Simplify 3D um, to try to get to try to get it even better but these are really basic settings that you can start with um, to get a good print. The, the more detailed fine tuning of your settings for this filament is mainly based on that that runniness or that pliableness um, but it's very minor, you, you shouldn't have a problem.